these are the 3D printed parts as they come off the printer. Um, so I've replicated the same um, inset for the drive pin here. Now this plate is made slightly thicker as I will show when you mount the unit onto the car you can get away with a slightly thicker. And on the reverse side there is actually a little spacer offset here. But to allow the item to be printed on a flat printer such as this on the flat print surface you can get a normal spare one of your spare eight by five uh, bronze bearings that come in the kit which will then replicate this side here now this tube here is normally a normally 11 millimeters high but what i have done is i printed this in a 12 millimeter so i don't know if you can see i actually suffer with a little bit of like elephant's foot on the base of this collar so this will give me the opportunity to sand down or trim this to make it the exact right length to actually take up the spacing between the drive cog and the actual end of the shaft and i should do a little build video in a moment of how this all goes together prior to assembly you just need to run an m3 die through the holes in the 3d print now these 3d print holes i from memory are 2.4 millimeters which means they are slightly smaller than is required so if you do find the die is actually a little tight pre-drill the holes with the correct size drill bit before tapping the holes also tap the holes from this side which is the side that the spur gear will actually mount to that way you don't form a burr on the face of the plastic compared to this side now that burr can be removed or it can be left um, it depends how close it the ends up with the spacing actually in the chassis which i'll show in a moment to ensure the parts are clean and the correct size before installing you will need to run a five mil drill through the center of here now this is actually printed to five mil but can be a little tight and you also need to run the five mil drill through the center of this spacer um, it shouldn't be too tight you just may end up with a slight bit of burring a bit like i have from the elephant foot scenario from the printer so once those are done you're then ready to start the install for the install process uh, we have the standard parts on the right hand side so this is the standard aluminium drive shaft the aluminium spacer the tamiya aluminium spur connector this is the original aluminium sorry the original tamiya spur this is the 3d printed spur adapter this the actual spacer you will need four m3 by six screws and an eight by five brass bearing now this can be assembled on either the standard plastic shaft that comes in most kits or the aluminium we will be installing it onto the aluminium shaft so first of all we need a bearing then we need the sleeve so this has been drilled out with an m with a five mil drill piece so that will go to there now this, as I said in my other, earlier part of the video, this sleeve may be too long and may need trimming to allow it to actually fit into the chassis correctly. We then have the pin that goes through there. We can now get our new spur adapter and press it into here and it's not quite a nice fit across here. And we should be able to see that those four holes line up so we get our M3 by 6 screws and we put them through the actual holes in the spur gear. They should go into the threaded holes that you tapped in the plastic. Now remember these screws holes are only tapped into plastic so don't over tighten them. Put them in and then give each one an equal tighten. So that you end up with in equal pressure so because this spur gear is equally mounted onto this spacer these screws are purely holding the spur gear on to that spacer the actual rotational force will be against the threads of the screws so as long as we can stop this part rotating into the spur gear the screws do not need to be super tight so we can give them a just an in and a tweak now they will go up fairly tight because I've made the plastic adapter as thick as possible and as you can see the screws shouldn't protrude through here if your screws are protruding you may find they will foul on the chassis now as to say these are m3 by six screws 
into there and they end up quite nice and flush. We can now put that onto the shaft, allowing for the drive pin to locate into the actual shaft there. So we now have a nice tight fit. Now, as I said in my earlier part, normally the aluminium one has this ridge on here, but to allow you to 3D print this surface flat on your printer, you replace that part with a M5, sorry, a eight by five bearing, then your standard bearing, and then you have your drive output shaft on there. Then that will then go into the chassis here. And as you can see, that should pop into there quite nicely. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but my bearing here is a little tight, which means I need to trim some of this plastic shaft down just so that I can get that to pop into place. But the actual 8x5 bearing goes there. And the reason your screws cannot protrude past this edge is there is a plastic shoulder in here that those screws need to clear. Now you could probably get away with them poking out maybe one or one and a half mil, but if they stick out too far, they will foul on this part here. Now this part goes to the bottom of the chassis, so it's not a rotational part, it's a full drop part. So I shall just pause the video there while I go and trim this collar down, just so I can get that bearing to pop into there. And as you can see, Hopefully you can see there, if I can get the camera to focus. It's about one or one and a half mil out. Now it should be 11 and I've made this 12. So I can now sand this or trim this down to the correct length to take up any slop. And as you can, I don't know if you can notice, it should actually put the spur gear nicely into the middle of this shaft here. So I'm just going to go and pause the video, trim that shaft down and come back in a sec. Okay, I've now sanded and trimmed the plastic spacer down and I don't know if you can see but the actual plastic spacer allows for this bearing to move slightly Now that is to do with the tolerances in the chassis so if I now get the chassis in place here and place this in here by me pushing the bearing forward now and putting the shaft back I can now get this shaft and I don't know if you can see that doesn't move it moves probably half a millimeter that's to allow for some tolerances in the actual drive gear here and in the actual making to the, <coughs> the plastic excuse me so we now have a nice smooth snug spur adapter and as you can see the spur runs nice and straight there so once you get your motor you can put your motor in. Now you may need to adjust the actual pinion in line with the spur. Fortunately, there is enough room in the actual TTO2 chassis to adjust that into here. So once that is now adjusted, you can now see that runs nice on the spur gear and on the pinion. Now, the other good thing I will be showing you in just a moment is you can use this spur gear adapter with 48 pitch. So this here, this is a 75 to 48 pitch Robinson's Racing spur gear. Now I got this from Hobby King I believe and this actual spur gear adapter will work with this spur gear. So I shall very quickly cut the video, undo those four screws and fit this onto here instead. Now my pinion won't work on here because this is not a 48 pitch pinion but the actual principle is the same so I'll just cut the video here and come back in a sec with them swapped over. Okay as you can see I've now swapped to the Robinson's Racing Spur gear using the same four holes 
the same collar, same spacer, the same bearing configuration. I then pop that into there. We have the same amount of play in here, which is probably half a millimeter, if not slightly less. And as you can see, the Robinson's Racing one runs nice and true. And there's a if you do find there's a slight wobble in your traces, you may just need to clean the surface that the spur gear mounts to, or even sometimes these ones, Robinson Racing, they're actually quite thin, but they require tweaking on some of the screws. So we can see that there is running out slightly. So if I give that a tweak, it should run better. This gives you the option to run 48 pit spur gears and with the diff cover mounted and the standard motor cover mounted you get a nice smooth running. I hope you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and um, I shall probably put these files up onto my mini factory or onto Thingiverse or both and provide the links in the description. Um, as I said, you can install this onto the, this is the Fast Tracks, slightly cheaper equivalent version. The configuration is the same. Um, so basically it replaces the Tamiya part here. Now these aren't expensive, but this just gives you the option to print this at home. And as I said, the actual rotational forces are the bearing slipping inside, that drive pin slipping inside that cup there. Now that presses in there nice and firmly chance of that twisting out of there I don't think is going to come out that easy. Now if you're going to start running high-end brushless motors then stick with that mini one. This just gives you the people that have got an FDM printer at home an option to actually make their own spur gear, buy these cheap Robinson Racing spur gears, run a different pitch. You could obviously obviously run different spurs. This is the Tamiya spur this is what comes in the high speed bearing kit. I think this is a 68 from memory. 68 turn. Um, but yes, you could certainly run whichever you like. And I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And um, see you in the next one.